question you went to the recent 2025 World Artificial Intelligence Conference that was in Shanghai. And I just want to ask you how it was. Like, what did you discover? What questions arose for you? Oh, I, I have to say,、uh, I confess that you know my my understanding of AI、uh, changed.、Uh, Significantly after this conference, it's a world of、uh, telecommunications. It's, it's a world really of of, of different uh, uh, possibilities. We're looking at a new production force in data.、Uh, you know, we, everything related to、um, AI. I think it's very it's certainly correct. So this this is this is the opening of a new transformation、uh, for humanity. We have to understand it first. I think there's you know a lot of a lot of work to do here in China. It, it's very easy because. You see it, you know, on an everyday basis.、Yes. I think I think you have been exposed more to to AI. I still think our countries in global south are 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 not necessarily at that level. You know, you've you've also had a very a very important element, which is that you've been able to craft your own digital sovereignty here、yes. by、uh, you know doing your own research and development, guaranteeing a, a framework, a, a legal framework to operate.、Uh, AI. So those are things that we are、uh, now starting to do as well. I mean, in the case of Venezuela, in particular, you know, we're, we're debating a law,、uh, so to, to give it a legal framework. We're pushing for、uh, training in AI, and you know, our, our science, National Science University now is, is you know, has at least three mayors that, that you know that, that are are covering AI subjects, and we, we're, we're trying to be part of that development. But certainly, you know, one of the things that you notice、uh, is that the Chinese view on AI is is、uh, as a tool of common good and common development,、yes. and that that to me was striking in comparison to what we see from big tech companies. And this idea is always, you know, a competition between each other and who has the best,、uh, you know,、uh, product and sort of seen take over live another type really of capital to、yeah. privatize.、Uh, yeah. Uh, you know spaces and 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 doesn't seem like it's something that 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 would necessarily help development because it, it, it seems like like another of those、uh, for profit arrangements.、Yeah. And I think for for the global south, definitely it is it, it is important to to seek better, more cooperation with China because of that view of AI. Yeah. If we aspire to have our own. Uh, digital sovereignty as well. Yeah, I mean, digital sovereignty is really the key here, you know. And I'm so happy to hear that there are countries in Latin America that are starting to understand AI, but not within the U.S. hegemonic and capitalist framework. You have spent time in China, and I've spent time in the U.S., so I know and I understand the differences. And I think that is a core misunderstanding that a lot of people still have, and I don't blame them. You know, I think with All the AI technology and the robotics and a, a lot of the technological development that comes out of the U.S. It's scary, and it is rightfully scary. And because they are so dominant, most of the stories that we hear about AI, if we're not in China, have access to Chinese media or Chinese netizens, is that U.S. AI is stealing people's data. You know, it's privatizing everything. It's Ruining the environment, like we hear so many of these stories. So of course, I don't blame the people for feeling skeptical or worried about AI and its future. And then I'm in China, and it's a totally different framework. And I can also vouch and say I've been to these conferences. I've been to the companies that produce them, and genuinely, I see a grounded and almost like common sense idea that AI is here to help. The people, not to take over them, not to make money off of them, but to be a tool for the really like difficult and strenuous tasks that we have to face every single day. Right, the the labor that takes hours and hours and hours that could be minimized to a short amount of time, and then optimizing time. I was telling you earlier off camera that there is a new technology. It was an AI where you can. It's an avatar, right? Where you can where rural countryside. Uh, live streamers who sell their products online, who sell their products through live streaming—that's a huge source of their income. You know, they pick fresh lychees from the tree, or they pick the fresh fruit, and then they want to sell them. How do they have a direct connection to customers? This technology allows them the live streaming, allows them to stay in their farms, to stay in their hometowns, to not have to leave to go to another city or whatever, and then directly. 
connect with people who want to try the fresh produce from the farm. And there's delivery services that allow you to get that produce within a day, freshly picked from a tree. I've recently got it myself. But the AI then allows you, allows the, the rural farmer to upload as an avatar and then to stream for hours of the day so that they can also just go and do other tasks and spend their time doing other things. But the live stream will continue using their voice and using their avatar and then make money for them. And again, I know that, like I said, in the US, when they hear avatar, when they hear uploading things, of course, it's scary. I understand why. But I do genuinely think in China, AI is designed to make life easier. And I hope that that kind of technology can also help other countries in the global south to genuinely allow everyday working class people to have an easier time and to not just have to, you know, do extremely strenuous tasks that take 10 times the amount of time that AI could assist them with. So I completely agree with you. And I think we it's important to make that distinction. You know, in no way am I also saying all AI is amazing and good because we've seen the ways that it can be used for bad as well. But I'm asking people to just be open to the way that Chinese AI could really help people and the way that it is moving on a socialist path, which is the main difference here. Well, I think I think also the difference is that you, you, what you feel in China is that there is a public discussion about it. I mean, yeah. that, that there is engagement between the development of AI and the population. I mean, you just gave a wonderful example, and that example you, you can see reflect. I mean, I went to to uh, the uh, Shanghai Art Museum to to see uh, uh, an exhibit of uh, farmers, uh, farmer artists that that are you know captured their daily life, and a lot of these uh, paintings had references to uh, you know the QR codes, um, you know the smartphones. So you see that this has actually become. Part of their daily lives. Yeah. So you have an open discussion. I think what what's lacking in in the West uh, and especially around big tech is is that you don't have the discussion. Yeah. You don't and, and people and people feel afraid. And people don't understand. And 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 I think it's it's a transformation like we have seen other transformations in history. But what the important thing is, it, it, I think it's inev- inevitable. So we have to have a discussion. How how especially in the global south. How are we going to deal with this uh, transformation yeah. and uh, and make it a transformation that really is oriented towards the people, yeah. toward the you know the the the, the communities, uh, their improvement, and, and 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 like you said, you know the farmers help each other, or you know how do we make this not be the private uh, you yes. know business and uh, enterprise of a small group of people. Yeah. Again, I think China's being a step ahead in this in this area is also going to help the global south, perhaps not even make the same mistakes that China made along the way. You know, save save some time, even. yeah, because China has already opened the path. So now you know we we follow through learning from from what China has done, and 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 I I, I myself I think I'm you know I'm I'm hopeful uh, of what we can do.